The Bengals winning streak ends at four. Hi again, everyone, and welcome into Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I'm James Erpine. The Bengals fall to the Texans 30-27 to in a wild, wacky game. Let's get to our post-game takeaways. And for more, let's welcome in Elise Jesse, who, yes, was hiding behind me. Let's... Uh, <laughs> Let's dive into, as we joke, to a, a rough game here at Paycor Stadium. Yeah. Uh, and it was rough for a variety of reasons. Let's start with the end result. Uh, the, these fans were filing out after Joe Burrow's second interception. We made our way down to the, the news conference room. And the Bengals, well, they rallied. Cam Taylor Britt has an interception with just over three minutes to go. They score a touchdown. They get the ball back. Tyler Boyd makes a huge play. It looks like they're going to score a touchdown. And they have to settle for a field goal. Boyd uh, had that 64-yard reception and then has the drop. That would have been the go-ahead touchdown. And then, obviously, the Texans win it uh, at the end there. I wanted to recap, get as much of the recap out of the way, because that's a crazy three and, three and a half minutes or so. And the Bengals fought a five and four on the year. The second straight game that Houston has had just a dramatic ending. We knew when Houston was going to come into town that they were going to bring all the drama and they lived up to their reputation because the final minutes of this game were completely dramatic. And I think it caught the Bengals off guard a little bit. Yeah, they they won in the trenches. I would say that the Texans certainly won the trench battle on both sides, putting pressure on Joe Burrow. And then on the other side, C.J. Stroud just kind of hung in the pocket there all, all game long. And that's what we saw at the end. This Bengals defense, this is the the worst I think we've seen them all year. They still won the turnover battle, forced three turnovers. I mentioned Cam Taylor Britt's interception that kind of set things up and gave the Bengals a chance late. But man, Noah Brown, I think is still open. I, I mean, he he looked like modern day Chad Johnson in the '85, and I'm I'm joking, but he was 172 yards. He entered with 270 plus yards receiving on the year. Had 172 today against the Bengals. Uh, Devin Singletary running for 150. Mm -hmm. C.J. Stroud mentioned him 356 yards passing and the game winning drive put them in position at least with the game winning drive. Like this was this offense for the Texans outside of turning the ball over, they really weren't stopped, and they, they would only stop themselves with turnovers. No, and it's the first time all season that Devin Singletary has rushed for over 100 yards. 150 today, as you said. His first touchdown of the day, by the way. And it's not going to get any easier for the Bengals. I mean, their rush defense was trash this afternoon. It was not good. And now they go into Baltimore, which, by the way, Baltimore, I believe, had two rushing touchdowns on the day from Gus Johnson and uh, Keaton, I believe. Keaton Mitchell. Yes, Keaton Mitchell. Two rushing touchdowns there, and it, they've got to pick it back up. They've got to fix those mistakes, and they only have a few days to do it. Yeah, that's the part. It's a short week. Obviously, we'll have you covered all week long, and you're right. This Texans offense was not known for running the ball at all. That was the one thing all week. We didn't even really talk about it here because I think it was natural to assume that they weren't going to be able to run the ball. They were without their best running back in, in Damian Pierce, their starting running back. And so now you do face a run heavy team in four days. And, and so that is certainly a, a really, really good point. And then on offense, it started like they weren't going to miss a beat. They move the ball downfield, 10 plays, 75 yards. Joe Burrow starts 7 of 8 for 60 yards, hits Trenton Irwin for the 32-yard touchdown, and then it was punt, 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 five punt. Five punts in a row. <laughs> five punts, literally five punts in a row. So Brad Robbins broke a sweat today, but that's not what the Bengals have been doing offensively. And in that law, as much as anything, even though it was only a three-point game, that law is what, what really cost them. You know what, I was honestly, when looking at the Texans' defense, I don't think that their defensive line was talked about enough. I think they are underrated because they were relentless today, and they seem to, each game you watch them play, it seems like they pick one offensive lineman, maybe two offensive linemen, and just kind of bully that guy all game and just kind of wear him down as much as they can. And I'll say another thing, I, I'm kind of not surprised that the Texans' defense played a pretty decent game this afternoon because Matt Burke, when he was here in 2015, I mean, they had the second uh, rated scoring defense that year. They had 28 turnovers that year. I mean, Matt Burke got the best two years out of Vinnie Ray in his career here. I'm not surprised. It's Matt Burke, the defensive coordinator of the Houston Texans, looked like he had his guys ready today until the final minutes. Yeah, and Joe Burrow said that afterwards. He was very frustrated, called it one of the most frustrating losses of his career. And I get it. I understand it because this is a game that – a month from now, certainly right now, I think, those guys in there think they should have won. A month from now, it could cost you. Two months from now, it could certainly cost you. And the Bengals now, 5-4. and four. 
this offense, the lulls, the inconsistencies, they have to figure that out. And, and yet I thought I liked what I saw from Joe Burrow today, even with the interceptions. Overshoots Drew Sample, makes a bad decision there, trying to force it late with under four minutes to go, but finds Jamar Chase off script. Had a really nice throw to Trent Irwin off script where he's rolling out and having to make plays. And you're right, the Texans' defense forced him to do that, and it looked like it would work. Let's get to the play, and we glossed over it a little bit at the beginning, the Tyler Boyd play. It's a play he catches all the time. And yeah. he, he had two drops in this game. We've watched him. We were here it's covering the team when he was drafted in 2016. We've seen it time and time again. And it didn't come down to that. Zach Taylor, Joe Burrow, a bunch of guys said that and, and said Tyler shouldn't blame himself. Tyler didn't want to talk afterwards, which I'm sure he's very, very frustrated with his performance. That's, that's tough because with T. Higgins out, you bank on Boyd. You're banking on Chase. Even with him injured and, and playing through, or at least hurt, playing through something with that back issue, you're banking on these guys to make plays. Boyd's final stat line's really, really good. Had the 64-yarder that would have set up that touchdown and, and obviously couldn't haul it in. I feel like Tyler Boyd is probably getting killed on social media right now, but people forget that his little nickname leading up until today was Mr. Reliable. Everyone could rely, especially Joe Burrow, could rely on Tyler Boyd to make big catches in big moments. And those drops were just so out of character for him. I think he's just, he's got to just wipe that slate clean and start over again. And I, I saw numerous players going up to Tyler Boyd today in the locker room, trying to console him, trying to, you know, let him know that it wasn't all his fault. But you certainly could tell that he was taking that personally and he was taking that hard. Yeah, no doubt. Mike Hilton I saw go up to him. I'm sure you saw other, other guys as well. For a second, so Boyd's locker is next to Burroughs, and they're both just staring off into space during the, the open media session for quite some time. Burrow, longer. I, I still don't know if Burrow showered. He's still He's probably like staring off into sp space. Yeah, it's uh, – it's tough. This is a tough loss. The Bengals in fourth place in the AFC North. The Ravens fall to 7-3 and three after the Cleveland Browns pull off the comeback win. They sit at 6-3. and three. The Steelers sit at 6-3 and three as well. And then the Bengals at 5-4. and four. So Thursday, it's a big, big game. And we'll see on Trey Hendrickson, but it didn't look good at the end there. And, and so pass rush, we just talked about trenches. Trey Hendrickson could miss some time. So that's just another note. Any other thoughts on this game before we go? I think this is a must-win game now. Another must-win game of the season for the Cincinnati Bengals. They have got to make up ground in the AFC, and they have one of the toughest tests ahead of them, which is a road game. They have to leave on Wednesday and then face the Baltimore Ravens. That has got to be a win for them. They leave for Baltimore in less than 72 hours. That's how quick the turnaround is. It's quick for reporters, <laughs> all right? It's quick. I'm already thinking, like, all right, how do we – so for, for players, it's, it's much, much harder. Coaches, obviously, as well. So we will be covering it every step of the way. Make sure you check out all of our locker room interviews. Elise got Jamar Chase, Cam Taylor-Britt. Obviously, we have Joe Burrow, Zach Taylor. A ton more right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. So for our channel coordinator, Andrew Fox Miller, and at least Jesse. I'm James Rapine. Thank you so much for watching Cincinnati Bengals Talk.